Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Higurashi When They Cry. It's your boy, Kalago Gaming, and you know how we do things around here. This is going to be Chapter 6 of Arc 4, Himutsubushi. I think I said it correctly. If not, you can proceed to slaughter me in the comment section down below, you know what I'm saying? But, um, here's what I'm thinking, man. If we're following the same formula as the previous chapters, we're probably looking at another three or four chapters to go but i'm wondering if that's going to be the case with this one because the way you could squeeze out those extra chapters from the other uh <clears throat> other arcs was that you had a resident living in hinamizawa um after the events of the festival happened in this case <laughs> that's not really possible is it so it feels like Shit's gonna go down one way or another in this chapter, and I think after this we might just have one more maximum chapter, you know? We'll see what happens. We're gonna dive into it and see where we end up, alright? それは誰もが忘れそうなほど地方の小さな村の出来事悲劇は幕を閉じその傷跡も消え去ろうとしていたある日 青年は、かつて出会った少女に思いを馳せる。あの日聞けなかった言葉、あの日果たせなかった約束、その後悔と投獄が、閉じられたままだった運命を開く、一つの光となった。暇つぶし。運命は、Midsummer, 1985. Now we come full circle. Papa! Papa, Aww. Uh. Oh. So he survived that uh, festival night. Well, obviously, in the beginning of the game, he was in the future, so never mind. Miyuki was sitting next to me. I quickly patted her head after hearing her say that. I must have had a bad dream while sleeping in the cabin. I was sweating profusely. Yeah. No, no, no. Akasaka, you, you're very loud in my ear right now, bro. It's <laughs> I tried to wipe away the sweat while answering and looked around for a handkerchief or a towel. And then, a cold drop ran down my forehead. Miyuki turned to me and smiled, then wiped my face with the towel she received at takeoff. Arigato, Yuki. <laughs> Thanks to her, I was finally able to shake off my slumber, so I got up from the ale seat and looked out the window. I wrapped my arms around Miyuki in the window seat and listened to the noise as the land and sea blew past us before our eyes. <laughs> and then, the plane gently turned before entering the airport runway. But I'm hearing cars, bro. Arriving at the lobby, I glanced around looking for Oishi, and was met with a familiar gruff voice calling out to me. アカサカサ。ハハハハハ。ハンカスマザファッカ。ダンデンブリでしょ。ゴブサタシておりますね。おいさん、本当においさしぶりです。おいしクラップヒズハンドダウンオンマイショルダー、セレブレーティングアーリ
He had apparently gotten really into it and had decided to spend the rest of his new life devoted to that hobby. He was aiming to get his instructor's qualifications before he hit 80 and live out his old age dandily. We are... <laughs> Aww. Wait, can we see something like... <laughs> Oishi suddenly turned his attention to Miyuki, who was standing idly next to me. He bent down on his knee to look her in the face. However, my daughter was frightened and hid behind my back. Kora, Miyuki. She was staring at Oishi with a dubious expression while tugging at the hem of my shirt. She's usually not this shy. I wonder what's wrong. お、おじさん顔が怖いからな。よかったらお名前を聞いてもいいですかえっと、赤坂みゆき、7歳です。こんにちはです。うん、いいお返事です。さすがは赤坂さんの娘さんですよな。おいし gently stroked Miyuki's head and smiled as though she were his own grandchild. After finally seeing that, Miyuki smiled in relief. Shortly afterwards, Miyuki told me that she was just doing what I had told her to do, be careful around strangers. Oishi overheard that and let out a hearty wahaha, shaking his body while laughing and walking. I let myself into Oishi's car and we headed out towards the Hot Spring Inn. I had originally intended to crash at Oishi's place, but Oishi was quite obstinate that his home wasn't suitable for that, so it came to this. At the end, we relaxed while soaking in the hot springs and then ate a delicious feast until we were full. Miyuki had a little of the Mongolian barbecue and was delighted with it. After our bellies were swollen, Miyuki grew sleepy and went off to bed. Then, Oishi and I reminisced about the time we played mahjong together in Hinamizawa. It seemed that to celebrate our reunion, Oishi had looked for people who could play. But unable to find a suitable candidate, we had to give up on putting together a table. As we drank together, we excitedly recounted our exploits during the final manhunt. でも見つけられませんでした。多分村に他の事件との繋がりは何も出ませんでした。そっちでは私はあの後しばらく現場を離れましたので、よく結局全部闇の中ってことで決着したようですがね。ね。おいしスマイルライリーアズイシップヒスチルドリンク。あの後は大変でし
When I did, Oishi almost immediately handed the phone to one of my colleagues who happened to be there. Not only was I injured in the brawl with the suspects, but I had disappeared to drink late into the night without leaving any sort of contact information, so I thought he would definitely be mad. However, all he said was that it was something he couldn't talk about over the phone, and that I should come to the station as soon as possible. At the time, I could only think that he must have been really pissed off. But when I arrived at the station, he said this. Oh no. I didn't want to say nothing, but... During that trip to meeting uh, Oishi, it was only him and his daughter, bro. Having no idea what happened, I borrowed the phone to contact the hospital Yuki was staying at. After being given the runaround several times, I was finally able to talk to someone in charge, and after mincing words for quite some time, they told me. Was it at childbirth or afterwards? The world became a blur as I sat there dumbfounded. Yuki's death was unbelievably abrupt, unbelievably sudden. I could have understood if there was some kind of problem during birth. But Yuki's death wasn't anything like that. Oh shit. On the stairs on the way to the roof, she just happened to slip and fall. Nah, she was pushed off, bro. And she just happened to fall on an unfortunate place at an unfortunate angle. That was it. Wanting to blame Yuki's death on somebody, I began to think that it was an act of revenge by the Defense Alliance, that they killed my wife and made it look like an accident. What I learned when I flew back to Tokyo, however, was much more cruel than that. Yuki had a habit of going up to the roof to cool off in the evening. There was an elevator up to the 7th floor, but from there you had to take the stairs to get to the roof. Even in her late pregnancy, when the evening came, she would always head up there. Her father had always said for her not to push herself, but Yuki insisted that until the time she had no choice but to stay in bed, she should be allowed to do as she wished. However, I had never once seen Yuki go up to the roof. I only heard that from her father and the nurses. That was because whenever I visited her, she would spend that time with me instead. I heard the reason why Yuki went up to the roof from a nurse she had become friendly with. She had said that her husband was away on business a lot of the time, and that whenever he called, she would be able to cheer him up and give him courage. But when he didn't call, she couldn't do that. Her husband might put on a show of bravado, but in reality, he grew lonesome pathetically fast. She was probably just the same. Whenever he left for business, not clear when he would be back, she felt very lonely. Whenever she cheered him up, she was usually cheering herself up as well. That's why, whenever he went far away for an important job, on the evenings he didn't call, at the very least, she felt that standing underneath the same sky, her feelings would reach him. At that moment, I remembered the words that the girl told me. That it was best that I go back to Tokyo right away. Otherwise, there would be something I would regret horribly. Yep, that's it. Because I was away on business that day, Yuki had headed up to the roof. Had I known that this would have been the result, had I done as the girl had said and dropped everything to head back to Tokyo, I might have been with Yuki on the day she died. And you probably would have been either reprimanded, lost your job, or demoted to something. If I was with her, she wouldn't have gone up to the roof. The day my wife died was on the evening of the third day of my trip. Yes. It was right before the time I had the sudden urge to hear Yuki's voice and ran around the village trying to find a phone. The girl had gone around and cut all the phone cords. If she hadn't and I had made that call, I would have undoubtedly learned of Yuki's death at the time and collapsed in tears. Of course, even though the cords were cut, it had only put me off learning Yuki's death by that one evening. In the end, I had learned of it the next morning. However, when I managed to put my emotions in order, I realized that it was that girl's small token of consideration.
<笑>偶然では超能力じゃあるまいし大石さんは教えてくれましたよねあの子はお社様という神様の生まれ変わりではないかと言われてるってねえまあ村の年寄りどもは古で理科に陣痛力があると信じてるようでしたがね陣痛力 I wish he had originally said it as a kind of a joke, but realizing that I was serious, he slumped his shoulders. Ah, so I don't know if I'm going to be a little bit of 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 a little ユキエノジコウ、ヨゲンステミセマスタ。お wish he tried to laugh it off, but out of respect for my deceased wife, he kept it restrained. ゲンショグノ、ケシのビンワンソーサカンガ、ジンツーリキアラ、タタリアラをシンジルアカデ。She prophesied her own death. Having him say that so bluntly, I couldn't respond. Of course, I had no intention of believing such odd things, but he could only say that because he didn't know what I did. Since I met that other girl who was both and wasn't Rika Furude, I couldn't deny the existence of any otherworldly entity. Not prescience, but a warning. If what the girl had said was a warning about Yuki's accident, then things became much easier to understand. Basically, the line of thinking became that it was a threat because I didn't go back to Tokyo. My wife was killed in a way that made it look like an accident. Part of me still does. There weren't any witnesses to Yuki's fall. There was the possibility that somebody had hidden, waiting to push Yuki down the stairs. However, the cleaning ladies frequented the roof to hang laundry, and security cameras on each floor hadn't recorded anything out of the ordinary. There wasn't anything set up on the stairs, and I was unable to find anything suspicious. Oish's expression had completely sobered up. No way. When Yuki died, I thought that as well. More precisely, I wanted to blame somebody, so I created the most viable scapegoat. But without any clear evidence, that violent notion faded along with those wounds in my heart. I wish he smiled slightly in disbelief as he poured more beer from his bottle. Yeah, it is yo. Akasaka san no yu tori. Furu de Rika wa mirai ga wakaru yogen sha da to shimas. Mm hmm. Nara, naze ano dai sai gai ga yuchi deki na gatta desu. Disaster. Anna osoroshi ga sai gai ga okoru to shite te, dou shite damatte itan desu. Oh, so that's canon? ほんの数時間前でもいいもし村に知らされていたらほとんどの人は死なずに済んだかもしれないじゃないですか But wait She died before the gas eruption happened though Great Inamizawa disaster in memoriam list It was near the end of June 1983. Volcanic gases from the Onigafuchi swamp erupted and hit the village in the middle of the night. It was an unprecedented disaster where the whole populace was wiped out. 
It caused a wave of panic about volcanic gas across the country, causing people to overreact over any reports of odd smells. I hadn't heard of the blockade on the Hinamizawa area being lifted, so it should still be cordoned off. It was my turn to be lost for a response. まあ、でも、親白様の生まれ変わりであるフルデリカが殺されたので、村が親白様の怒りに触れて、それで沼から正気が湧き出して、村を死滅させたんじゃないかって。そういう話が確かに、ひなみざ系の生存した人間たちの
in the middle of his investigation. Kuma guy was a younger detective that was going to be partnered with Oishi after we met. ドミタケシの事件捜査のために村に聞き込みなんかに回ってたんですよ。何かの事件に巻き込まれたのかもしれない。私と一緒だったなら無事だったかもしれないと思うと今あの日どういうわけか私お腹を広く壊しましてね外
内臓を川に捨てたというところから転じたらしいんですよつまり雛見沢村においては内臓を引きずり出すことに宗教的な意味があったと、うん、で雛見沢村の昔話によるとですね人食いにと人間が仲良く暮らすための調停者としてお社様という神様が降臨しているってことになってるらしい確か古で理科はそのお社様の生まれ変わりだと言われてるんでしたねねえですからその荒人神である古で理科を回復して殺すのは村の信仰に対するこれ以上ない冒涜行為と言えるわけです信仰への冒涜それはつまりお社様への冒涜ということですねあとは赤坂さんも知っての通りですお社様のたたりが起こるのはその晩のことです雛見沢大災害 But why something so final? The official explanation was that some swamp upstream erupted with toxic volcanic gas which enveloped the village 発生した沼は鬼ヶ淵沼と言いまして雛見沢村の救命鬼ヶ淵村の一帯ではこの沼の奥底は地獄につながってるそうでかつて村にやってきた人食い鬼たちはこの沼から訪れたのだとかうんうんうんうんできすぎですねいやいやいやまだまだできすぎてますよ村には伝承がありましてお社様がお怒りになられると地獄の釜が開いて正気があふれ出すなんて言うんですよ。So let's ponder upon the idea of why お社様 got pissed off here.So if we take what リカちゃん or リカちゃんは had prophesied She was meant to be the victim of the fifth year. However, we had other victims. Now, the deaths of those victims were they the reason why everything went tits up with the whole village? Did Tomitake sons and、uh, Miyano, was that her name? The nurse? Did their deaths trigger this whole thing, or would it have happened regardless? And also the part about、uh, Satoko's uncle. Murabito ni tote, Jigokto yu noa, Numa no soko no koto. Tsumari soko kara, Shoki ga afre daste, Mura o oso to yu koto. So, Tsumari, Furu de Rika koto, Oyashiro sama no umare kari ga, Botok sare ru koro sare kata o shita no de, Oyashiro sama ga oi kari nna te, Tatari to shite ano dai sai ga yo ko shita to. Okay, so she was meant to die, but she wasn't meant to die in that manner, is what you're trying to say in that case. So, in which way would her death have been non sacrilegious, if that's the correct term for it? Like, Satoko's aunt's head was split open, bro. What are you talking about? そういう話がまかり通っちゃってるんですよ。Something doesn't add up here. つまり、あの大災害は人為的なもの。うーん、確かに、話ができすぎてますからね。I fucking disagree. おやしろ様のたたりが実在せず、本当の偶発的事故でもないってんなら、そう疑いたくもなりますよね。A wry smile formed on Oishi's face as he listened to my absurd take on things. He wore an expression as though if it were absurd, there was a time he had thought the exact same thing as well. Mura no shinko o megutte, kyo shin tekina ippa ga atta to kate shi. Kare ra ga oyashiro sama no oikari ga aru yo na jokyo o tsukuri da shi. Dai sai ga yo jikko ste mise da. And now you're talking about the S group. Mochiron? Watashi a warai ma sen. Well, that's a motherfucking first, isn't it, Oishi? Watashi mo. 一度ならずともそう考えたことはありますですが雛見沢村がいかに小さい村とはいえ人口は1000人以上
それを一夜にして抹殺するなんてどう考えても現実的じゃないです。The gas eruption was believed to have happened around 2 a.m., several hours before dawn. In that short amount of time, going around and killing all the villagers in a way that made it seem like poison gas didn't seem feasible at all. Gas の発生した沼もまた宗教的な意味がありましたよね。だとしたら、沼に何か仕掛けがあって、神の裁きをいつでも再現できるような何かがあったとか。自衛隊の発表では沼が発生源だということになってますよね調査チームとかが詳しく調べた上での発表ですからねそんな仕掛けがあったら見つけてると思いますけどね沼そのものに仕掛けがあるとは限りませんよほら聞いたことありませんか遠くの泉の水が枯れたら裏の泉も枯れたなんて昔話なんですかそりゃ水源ってのは地下水脈等でつながっていることが多いんです。沼や泉はそれが地上に露出した部分にすぎません。<笑>つまり赤坂さんが言いたいのは、鬼ヶ淵沼とつながった別の沼か泉があって、それに何らかの仕掛けをすると、鬼ヶ淵沼の圧力とか水圧とか、そういうものがいろいろ変わって、毒ガスが噴出する仕掛けを。大昔の村人がこさえていたとそういう話ですよね。Oh, we should laugh heartily, commending the fact that the youngins have a nice flexible way of thinking. That was the former detective in him. Even though it was a hypothesis that he didn't come up with, he still had the presence of mind to not dismiss it right away. 面白い話です。それが立証できたら。日本の犯罪史始まって以来の空前規模の大量殺人ってことになりますよ。Yeah. Um. It all depends on whether Satoko got away. But then how would she orchestrate this? Like, I don't. Yeah, I don't know about that, dog. ひなみざむらの封鎖が解除されたら。ぜひ調べるべきだと思います。大石様、県警にはまだ影響力はそこそこには。柔道部の名誉顧問ですからね。今でも夏の合宿屋なんかにはちょくちょく出かけてます。ひなみざ村の封鎖解除がいつになるかわかりませんが、ぜひ調べさせてください。わかりました。大石さんはこのひなみざ村連続開始事件。当時の署内は。村人の圧力でぎゅうぎゅうでしてね。連続事件は存在しないというのが当時の公式見解でした。事件はここで、またそれぞれに解決していると。バカな。村の信仰に基づいた連続事件であることは明白なのに。赤坂さん、そりゃ5年も続いて、派手な最後があった今だから言えることですよ。あの当時は。偶然の事件が偶然にも綿流しの日に起こる。私は起きないといいな、なんて感じだったんです。偶然なものか。少女は初めから、すべて予言していた。少女フルデリカです。あの子は。私にその後の事件をすべて予告してみせました。And you did not have the foresight to tell Oishi-san about these predictions? Come on, dog. Akasaka san, so ya, honto deska. Hi, Anoko a it tandes. Yokunen, Damu no Gemba Kanto Kuga Koro Sare, Stayo Barabara ni Sareto, Nomi ni Totomarazu, Sono Ato ni Tsuku Renzok Jiken was Svete, Watashi ni Yokok Ste Misemasta. Akasaka san, so no Hana Shoki Tanoa, Showa no Nanen no Hana Shiska. Watashi ga Shoujo to Dea Tanoa. 誘拐事件調査の折ですからバラバラ殺人の前年に That's correct. Wrinkles formed between Oishi's eyebrows as he closed his eyes and began to digest what I had just told him. a k a s a k a Fulu de Rika が人通力で未来が分かった。なんて話がなしだとするなら。はい。今さら。私を驚かせるための作り話だ
私は真実を話しています連続開始事件は発生の前年にはもう全てシナリオが用意されていたそしてその予告の通りフルでリカは殺されました私は初め大災害による死を指したものと思っていた She never mentioned Tomitaka Kun, did she? でも、Or did she? 彼女の死は災害ではなく、殺人者の手による残忍なものであることが分かりました。彼女は殺されると言った。彼女は自分の死を、具体的にあの時点で知っていたんです。なら、フルでリカは、どうして逃げ出さなかったんですかね<笑>仮にそういった死のシナリオがすでに出来上がっていたとして彼女はそれを知りかつ数年という猶予期間があったわけですよね逃げ出すなり警察に相談するなりの時間はあったはずですなぜ抗わずに自らの死を受け入れたんですわかりませんフルデリカは村の年寄り連中に可愛がられてはいましたがね両親を失った後は親類もゼロで身寄りはなく親しい友人と肩を寄せ合うだけの孤独な生活でしたからね戦う力も頼れる人間も身近にはいなかったのかもしれません彼女は自分の死に対して誰かに SOS を発しはしなかったんでしょうか村と警察が穏便な関係じゃなかったのは赤坂さんも知られるところだと思います<笑>少なくとも私の耳にはフルでリカが自身の身柄の本を求めてきたという情報はありません<笑>あるいは自身が宗教的な生贄にされることに対しそういうものがあったのかもしれませんねそんなはずはない I spoke decisively at that time she said it she had definitely said that she wanted to live happily that she wanted to spend her time surrounded by her dear friends She hadn't given up on life. She had hoped to keep on living.、Uh, at that moment, I became dumbstruck. どうしましたアカサカさんい,いえ。I fell into silence. Oishi folded his arms and began murmuring in contemplation again. Eventually, he stood up and headed towards the hallway to find the hostess, yelling that he wanted a pen and paper. When Oishi, Noisy, even though when he was just thinking, left. The room immediately fell into a chilled silence. I stood up. It was then I realized that I was drunk enough to be unsteady on my own feet. When I slid open the window, a beautiful yet somehow ephemeral moon drifted across the night sky. It was just now that I realized she hadn't accepted her own death, she wanted to keep on living. Happily and joyously. She had said that quite clearly to me, but I was a fool. I hadn't been asked explicitly, so I hadn't realized it. She had made it clear as day that she did not want to die. Wasn't that her cry for help? She didn't say as much that she wanted help, but even given that, it wasn't as though she wasn't looking for salvation. Without any family and unable to trust the police, she instead told somebody without any relation to the village, somebody from a faraway place, me. Help me. She had gone around and cut the phone cords. If I had made that phone call and learned of Yuki's death, I probably would have fallen into despair. If I was in that state, even if she was looking for help, her cries would have fallen on deaf ears. That's why. Knowing everything, she had cut the phone cords. She wanted even a little time to seek help from me. Oishi, just before now, had lamented that one of the younger officers got mixed up in a case, having been erased because he wasn't there. I was feeling the same way. If only I was there in June of 1983, I could have protected her. In 1983, It would have been five years since the kidnapping took place. While raising the only daughter Yuki had left me, putting all my youth and passion into my work, owning my wits and courage, wrestling with difficult cases. 
nothing like my failings during the kidnapping incident would have occurred. I wouldn't have been slow to react in a one-on-one -on -one fight and by that point I would have jumped into foreign mafia gambling parlors where I had learned to deal with automatic weapons, let alone handguns. I had grown so much that in 1983 I couldn't have even been compared to how I was in 1978. That's why, if I was by her side, I should have been able to save her life. No matter what conspiracy or foul plots drew near, I definitely would have protected her. She, even though sounding resigned, should have still been able to ask me for help. I just didn't realize it. I couldn't realize it. Just as I wouldn't have realized it if I was told of Yuki's accident, I wasn't able to realize it. I wanted to cry. If I had taken her words to heart, I would have prevented Yuki's accident. And I would have been able to protect the girl to whom I owed a debt from even a predetermined death. She must have been expecting that from me. I learned about the disaster while watching television in my house. Until I learned about that, I had forgotten about Hinamizawa. In order to recover from the shock of Yuki's death, I had tried to remove everything about the place from my memory. What an ungrateful fool I was. Even though in exchange for saving her, the girl had told me of a way to save Yuki, I was unable to accept her gratitude and now, here we were. She hadn't died in her sleep due to natural disaster. She was split open while still alive, killed while suffering the disgrace of having her organs torn out. She must have known beforehand that on that day, on that year, she would be killed in such a terrifying way. But even knowing what end awaited her, she was all too weak. A lone girl without anybody to rely upon, unable to seek help, had to swallow her own predetermined death and left this mortal coil. She said she wanted to live. She said she just wanted to live happily. That's all she wanted. She didn't ask for anything extravagant. For any person that was ever born, it was the very basest of desires. She never said a peep about wanting money or that she wished she was in somebody else's situation. She had said it. That if all deaths were preordained, then hers was probably also all according to plan. She might have been a lone, frail girl, but I don't think she would have accepted it all without at least putting up a fight. There must have been, in some small way, in some form of resistance, that she mustered. And with what she could muster, seeking my help was part of that. <coughs> I howled. I stomped the floor. Why did I become a police officer in the first place? How could I call myself an officer if I couldn't save a single girl from the misfortune that was awaiting her, huh? Was it because there was so much going on at the time that I couldn't process the fact that she was asking for help? <laughs> yes, right? I was still green. If I was in that situation now, I would have definitely been able to help her but it was already all over. Even if I wanted to sell the regrets she left behind, Hinamizawa as a dangerous area was still quarantined. Most of the people involved were already dead, with the few that did remain spread around the country unable to be traced. The stage of that tragedy was still off limits as well. The police investigation was put on hold, the case slowly being buried in the sands of time just like how I wouldn't have known unless Oishi had asked me about it. Akasaka-san, ka? At some point, Oishi had returned with a notebook in hand. Until I saw the expression on Oishi's face, I hadn't realized that I was in tears. Akasaka-san, <laughs> でも、もう全部遅いんです。少女は殺された。こんなにも無駄な殺され方で。私は頼られたのに。救えなかった。救えなかった。<笑> 
村人と良好な関係を築かなかった私にも責任があるかもしれませんフルデリカが私にそれを打ち明けてくれたなら私だって救いの手を差し伸べられたかもしれない彼女が打ち明けにたる信頼を築けなかった後悔していますこのワードを見てください。ならばフルでリカの敵を取るに値する方法が一つだけあります。I'm sorry? そんな方法があるんですかおいしショーミのペンのノートブック。フルでリカの死を痛むためにも、せめて私たちで真相。真相。そうです。フルでリカだけじゃない。大勢が死にました。彼らの無念は計り知れません。でも彼らの死はあの大災害でうやむやにされ、今は捜査すらされることなく、忘却の彼方に葬られようとしています。大勢死んだ。親さんも殺された。クマちゃんも消された。みんなみんな犠牲にあった。なのに警察は捜査もできないでいる。誰に無念が晴らせるのか。私たちだけなんですよ。赤坂さん。私たちに。ええ。明かせますよ。連続開始事件のすべての現場を踏み、村の裏事情に精通する私と、連続開始事件の前年にフルで理科から重要な真実を明かされたあなたとなら。でも、もう死んでしまったんですよ。うっ<笑>そうですフルデリカは死にましたあなたが青二歳だったから救えなかったグッジャーボイシーオイシグラブミーフォーザーレックエンリフテミーフェムリーバイデラプルスだからファキンタッチマイラプルスビッチそのつぐないとして真相を究明するんですあなたの話が事実なら、すべての事件は計画ということになる。そうならば、調べ方は全然変わってくるんですからね。私は、今夜をかけて、あなたと私の持つすべての情報をノートにまとめ、あの事件を終わらせるものか、絶対に暴いてやるんです。暴く。暴くねえ。あれから数年が経過しましたが、時効ではない。捜査は中断であっても終了ではない。まだ続いているんです。続けさせるんです。ええ。ええ。ええ、やりましょう。大石さん。このまま。終わらせたりなんかしない。絶対。私たちがこの真相を暴いてみせるんです。絶対に !I demonstrated my resolve to Oishi by crying out those words. And just then, Papa? The sliding door behind me opened, and Miyuki revealed herself by sleepily rubbing her eyes. My shouting must have awoken her. Then she rushed over to me. どうしたのパパ。パパ。泣いてるのあ,ああ何でもない何でもないよみゆき I tried hard to smile while wiping away my tears and though みゆき looked like she was about to cry herself she extended her little hand to me、oh. 大丈夫また怖い夢を見たの泣かないでパパ And when she makes that gesture toward me, I saw the figure of another girl overlapping with her. And her innocent gaze and innocent expression felt frustratingly nostalgic, 
filling me with painful torment. A girl who couldn't be here because I didn't reach out to her. She borrowed my daughter's body to offer me words of comfort. It might be a hallucination. Maybe a convenient illusion formed from my selfish dreams. However, it was her voice, I'm certain of it. Rather than blaming me for my mistake, she was compassionate. Right. That's already an impossible wish. That future is already gone. Even so, there is still something that I can do. <laughs> Not for many, many decades, though, you know what I mean? Someday, I'm sure. We will see her again that summer the Higurashi cried in Hinamizawa. Oishi and I vowed to bring the truth of the case to light and stood up. Everything ended in 1985. I, at least wanting to apologize, had searched for her grave. After the state autopsy, her remains were entrusted to one of the shrine's followers. In the future, when the quarantine on Hinamizawa area was lifted, they would be returned to her family grave. However, unsure who exactly took the remains of Rika Furude, until today, I couldn't even apologize to her. In the future, when the quarantine on Hinamizawa is lifted, all I could do then was to wait until whoever that person is returned to the grave. What I could do right now was not apologize to her. Instead, until I was able to meet her again, I would reveal the truth and dispel her regrets. Even now, sporadic eruptions of gas in Hinamizawa area meant that the prospect of the quarantine being lifted wasn't happening anytime soon. Most likely, it seems that she had no intention of meeting me again until I found the truth. That's why the quarantine wouldn't be lifted, or so I thought. Until the day I grasped the truth, it was the following year. Ooh. Oishi and I co-authored a book on the string of mysterious deaths leading up to the Great Hinamizawa disaster. I decided on the title. Higurashi, one day cry. That was because for those few days I was in Hinamizawa, the sound that I remember the most was the cry of the Higurashi. I could only wish that based on this book, those people involved with that incident could refresh their memories and bring to light a new truth. And more importantly, that nothing like this ever happens again. I wrote this in the afterword. Why did <laughs> This year, the quarantine on Hinamizawa still hasn't been lifted. Let's do it. Eh, this time, Higurashi's death.
いやいやなんだかんだと言いましても今回のシナリオは私の独壇場でしたからねしかも渋いジャズ調なテーマ曲まで追加これで笑えなきゃどこで笑えって言うんですかねえなハハハハというわけで大石はそろそろ出過ぎなのですよえそれはどういう意味ですかリカブクはい言葉通りの意味じゃーいあれだけ出番があってここまで出張ろうとは身の程をわきまえないにもほどがございましたよあ<笑>今回はメインヒロインはリカちゃん以外みんな出番ほとんどなかったからね今回は箸休め的なシナリオだからとは聞いてたけどここまでメイン勢がないがしろにされるとは思わなかったよミオンさんはまだいい方ではございませんの多少は登場していましたよ私とレナさんなんか気配も出てきませんでしょ at least had a mention. レナはジャケットにも登場してますですからまだマシなのですよということはつまり何ですの私だけが一人のけもので出番なしということなんでございますのミパーうはー私だけこの扱いはひどいですわうはーかわいそかわいそですよきっとだんだん扱いが悪くなって最後には脇役に転落しているに違いないのですよ<笑>そんなのあんまりですわそそんなことないよさとこちゃんのことが好きな人だって大勢いるんだもんそんなひどい扱いになんかならないよねこんな扱い嫌ですの<笑>ヒヒヒヒきっと次こそ出番がいっぱいあると思うな思うな元気出してこうねしかし今回のシナリオはおまけ的なシナリオとは聞いてたけど実際どうよなんだかずいぶん話がややこしくなったように思うんだけど僕には難しくてよくわかんないお話だったのですよ。I mean, it allowed us to narrow down on a couple of points, right? So, the key to solving this puzzle is right now with three people, maybe four. So, one of them is obviously trying to save Rika chan somehow so that she does not die. But another part of me also feels the same way about Tomi Takekun and also about Dr. Irie. And the fourth one was. Did Satoko not get away? So she, she, she avoided that disaster altogether. If I'm not missing a detail during the credits, then she got away, if I'm not mistaken. These four, one of these hold the key to preventing this from happening? But would that solve it? I don't know, man. I'm. I don't know. しろ信じられなかったのが連続開始事件が起こる前の年にもうリカちゃんがそれを知っていたなんて。And it wasn't a special power or divine power that appeared specifically for the deaths, right? For for the um for the curse, she was still able to tell other things as she was growing up. So maybe she has been possessed from Oyashiro Sama since the day that she was born. But what I don't get it is why would, why would Oyashiro sama kill her own host on the fifth year? I don't understand. Tekoto wa tsumari, sbete no jiken wa saisho kara yotei sareta scenario tekoto ni naru ndo ne. Kore wa kanari oki jouho da yo. Boku ga kitto miko na no de. おやしろ様のお告げで未来が分かったに違いないのですよ
So wait, would you also know that Satoko snuck into the shrine grounds? Or like the, 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 the room where you're not supposed to go into? Or is it only on significant things? But that, that, you, sh you should have known about that because you know stuff like uh, when it would rain or whatever, minor things like that. So I'm assuming that you would know that Satoko would sneak in there before she did that. それは真っ先に否定したいところだな。レナは祟り派なんで、木の水を見守る親城様の生まれ変わりであるリカちゃんに、そういう人通力も、ひょっとするとあったんじゃないかなって思うな。ああ、ダメダメ。人間派はそうい
あんたの後ろで糸を引いているやつがいるねいるんでしょ出てきなさい<笑>ハロロンマイシスターごきげんようあしーちゃんだこんにちはほら同じ罠に二度もかかってかわいそうかわいそうですやっぱりシオンか何気に主役張ったシナリオまであるのにこの狼藉あんたはやってくれるじゃないの<笑> I really like the delivery for the voice actor for me on 回答編前の折り返しおまけシナリオとはいえお姉だけに出番を許すほど私も寛大じゃないってことですまあそんなわけでちょっとサトコを焚きつけさせてもらいましたシオンあんた何が望みなの安全圏の確保とでも言いますか昨今ですねどういうわけかお姉がじりじりと票を伸ばしてるんですよねうん共通ルートのみーちゃんもええって意見が開発人の間でも結構多いんだよ<笑>小意地の悪いあんたのボロが出てプレイヤー処刑はやっと私の魅力に気づいてきたってことだねさとこもたたり殺しで好評からしいしレナやリカちゃんには根強い固定票があるしあんたの人気もとっくにかげってるってことだねそういうわけで。不穏に票を伸ばすお姉やさとこをここいらで一つ叩き落としておこうと思いましてこういう王子掛けを打たせてもらったというわけですあシオンさん今何と言いまして私も叩き落としてっておちびちゃんは気づくのが遅いようでそらにゃにゃにゃーの皆さんこんにちはイレギュラーの皆さんあんたたちメインヒロインはこれでおしまいですしシオンちゃんそこまでやらなくてもいいんじゃないかなまあまあジローさん面白いからほっときましょうよ私たち二人の出番がいっぱい増えるのよジローさんは私と一緒いやあ、あ、<笑>そ、そんなことないよ<笑>シエ先生先生までシーちゃんに買収されちゃったんですかご、ごめんね、リュウグッさんシオンさんが次回のシナリオからは教えてチエ先生のコーナーを作ってくれるって言うからつい誰から恥ずかしい処刑をしてあげましょうかねレナ、Most definitely レナ王子掛けを手伝ってくれたお礼にサトコからかなそれは許しませんよトーンか、カントがなんだか珍しく頼もしく見えますわサトコちゃんに対する狼藉は私入江京介が許すわけにはいきません私も脇役一派ではありますが怪獣できると思わないことですよありゃこの後に収録予定の「実録さとこメイド教育着せ替え編」の主役は交番したいとシオン様この入江一生どこまでもついてまいりますええ怪獣早っさーてこれで全て私の支柱ですねこれからはお疲れ様会もシナリオも全て私の思うままに進めさせてもらいますねあれ一人足りないシオン様リュウグウさんがいませんいつの間に抜け出したのかいたリュウグウさんさっき身動きしてはいけませんって言ったはずですよレナちゃん
悪いことは言わない抵抗しない方が無難だよレナ悪いけどこんなやり方おかしいと思いますそれは何のまね寝明かし編の台本なるほど登場回数を削られる前に確保しておこうという魂胆ね<笑>無駄な抵抗レナさん無駄な抵抗はよしておとなしくした方がいいと思います私をあんまり怒らせるとあなただけでなくお姉たちの処遇も変わってくることになりますよ台本を確保したくらいじゃ何もできないよレナここは悔しいけど言う通りにした方が大丈夫安心してこの目明かし編の台本が加わったことでレナたちはこの状況を逆転できるの逆転一体どんな秘策があるというんですの<笑>レナさんは結構笑わせるのがうまいですねなら試してみたらどうですその逆転ってやつを試しに見せてくださいしーちゃんは甘えてる本編にいくら出番がなかったからってこうしてお疲れ様会でこれだけの出番を得ているのに甘えてるよ私がいつ甘えたって言うんですしーちゃんは分かってないたとえお疲れ様会だけといえども出演し他のシナリオにもあれだけ登場しておいてこのそんなしーちゃんをね許すことができない地獄の演さが。ほら、聞こえてこないそそうかわかりましたわそうかゲイちゃんかそうだよねお疲れ様会はいつも出番なしそのゲイちゃんを差し置いてお疲れ様会占領なんてゲイちゃんが許すはずがないなるほどでそのいまだに収録居残り中のゲイちゃんがどうやってここへ現れるとまさかケイちゃんを私たちの誰かが追い抜いたわけでもあるまいに<笑>そう思うのがシーちゃんの慢心だよ<笑>いけないあれは赤坂編の収録ワード数表シー先生レナちゃんを取り押さえていよ出番だよ。ケイチくん。うん。<笑>そ、その声はケイちゃん？まさかケイちゃんは収録に残り中のはず。<笑>そうさ。今まではそうだった。収録に残りのたびに残りワード数で誰かを抜けば。お疲れ様会に参加してもいいよそれでも他のキャラと比べても2倍あるいは3倍以上もある分量をこなすなど不可能というか最初から参加させる気ないだろうと思って諦めてきたがついに俺は抜いたあるキャラをシオンこれを見やがれえそう主役として登場パターンが増えたシオンは当然しゃべるワード数もこれまでの2倍しかもミオンとキャストが同じだからさらに2倍その結果俺はようやくついに居残り免除そしてシオン今度はお前が居残りだう,うそ私次の目明かしでこんなに喋るんですかえー、っとケイちゃんが約500でシオンは2750円ジャーンこれ普通のアドベンチャーゲームなら全キャラの総合計算だよ But that's just Xion. What about you? しかもこれにミーの数が加わるのです。Oh、my God. その数やなんと。聞きたくない聞きたくないというわけでだ。レナ、感謝するぜ月にすら見放され、真の闇が地上を覆いしとき。漆黒の魔王。The demon lord of the darkest black? Get the fuck!
I see. If it's like this, he can appear even if he doesn't have any character art. お疲れ俺が抑圧された悪夢の中で手に入れた闇の力はまさに無限大で無料体操。俺の俺による俺のために作り出したこの闇の世界では。ケイチ君、なんだか怖いな。怖い。怖い日暮らしの時間はもう終わりだぜ
最善を尽くすべしとお墨付きがちゃんとあるのだもちろん新登場の赤坂さんに頼ろうとしても無駄だぜ昨日からお嬢さんを親類に預けて夫婦水いらずで温泉旅行だそうだからなつまり八方塞がりってわけさ甘いですねケイちゃん安易に闇の世界を生み出して妄想全開すちゃらか万歳ってやってしまうとというわけで千恵先生そういうわけです前原君真っ暗でよく見えませんけどなんだか千恵先生の服装が変わってますわね Bro what the fuck なんですのあの両手にいっぱいの剣をままさかそんなそれはいくらなんでも反則、うん、それ以上は内緒なのですよニパー前原くん少し置いたが過ぎたようですこれ以上は教会も見逃せませんちょちょちょちょっと待てよこ,こ,こ,れこれはないだろ映るだろ作品違うじゃねえかおいこんなのなしだろわわちょちょそ,そのでかいのはま,まずいってええー、は早すぎるあんたその動きはギャギャギャギャー<笑>改めましてこんにちは。この度は。日暮らしの泣く頃にすい暇つぶしをお楽しみくださり誠にありがとうございましたうん。プレイヤーの皆さんにはこの謎に満ちた物語をさまざまな角度から捉え吟味する権利があります例えば劇中に散りばめられた謎について推理をしそれを発表して反響を得たりすることもまた楽しいかと思います I'm very excited for the answer arcs メイカシーメアカシー That's fine. That's okay. So, let's see. 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 と遊んでくれるなら一緒に宝探しに行きたいな。No, fuck that with your psycho ass. はう。And there it is. There it is. That was Higurashi when they cry arc for Himutsubushi. Next time. We shall finally dip our toes into the answer arc of the series, and I cannot wait. I have so many questions I want to have answered here. Hopefully, hopefully, it will be worth it because the answer arc it, it's, it consists of three arcs, right? I am curious to see how much of the questions the first arc is going to respond. But I'm gonna give myself a little bit of time to、uh, miss this series, so we're not gonna see.、Uh, The fifth arc, the answer arc, immediately after this one. We're just gonna give the series a bit of time to breathe.、Uh, I've seen how you guys are repping the comments section. I really appreciate reading your、uh, comments because it's. You guys are invested. Like, a lot of people who have seen everything this game has to offer still being that involved in in a visual novel of this proportion. Like, this is. This is Pretty big undertaking if you think about it. This is over 100 hours of basically just reading, fam. So I, I get happy to see that you guys are showing this series a lot of、uh, love. 
Obviously, you guys don't have to do that, but you guys are doing it, and I appreciate y'all for it. So now, I figure after like over 90 minutes of hearing my voice, I'm pretty sure you guys are sick of my voice, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drop the mic and uh, pick it back up when it's time to start the uh, answer arc, alright? Meakashi, or whatever that was called. Yes, sir. I'll see you guys then, man. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'm out of here. Love y'all and deuces.